In this Kotlin on Android development tutorial, we're going to show you how you can record video from the rear camera. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so continuing on from the previous episode where we set up the media recorder, we're now going to capture a video, record a video from the rear camera display. Um, this is currently the third episode in the video capture series for the Camera 2 API, or in the Kotlin programming language. So if and if you want to, currently all these episodes are available on the site if you want to get hold of them straight away it's a one off fee of 10 US dollars and if you just want to start this tutorial here you can sign in this documentation is free you just have to sign in for the free YouTube membership and you'll get the details from git where to get hold of the code if you want to start this particular tutorial and you don't want to go through the previous episodes and for members who actually buy the plan outright the camera Kotlin camera 2 API plan outright they will get given a video describing how you can download the code and add it to your Android project okay so we'll make a start so we'll jump across to our Android studio first okay and I'm just want to go to the top of my screen first and I'll close down on my li uh, libraries right um, we set up I captured equals false. I do want to change that name, so I'm going to press Command R in a Mac, and I want to change is captured is recording there, and select replace all. Okay, the reason for that is the naming convention. I might want to use is captured for a still capture. It's too generic, and so is recording is quite clear on what we're trying to do here. Okay, so I do recommend that you do rename all the um, instances of is recording in this sort in this Kotlin file. Right now, what we want to do here is create a record session, and it's going to be very similar to what we did for the preview session, except we're going to be adding an extra service surface, the record service. And then after that, we'll be just basically making a request to start the media recorder. So the best way to do this would be to be copy the current implementation of the preview surface. And I will rename the one down below, change it from preview to record session. And so we don't forget, I will put it by in, the, in a line by itself, we want to set up the media recorder. So we've done that in the previous episode. So we want to set all the, um, the de decoders um, passed in the file name to be captured. Um, everything will get set up there when we call the media recorder um, function. Um, it, we do go into detail about this in the previous episode. Right, I also want to change the name of the surface. It's too generic because we're adding another surface as well. So I'll call this texture surface. Okay, and now I want to create another service to represent the record service surface. And to get the record surface, we do a call on the media recorder surface and that will give us that okay we're just going to move down one line at a time so hopefully I don't miss anything and um, altering this session so let's go to camera device and change the camera device template preview to template record and we can change that surface now to texture surface and I make a copy of that and we can also add our record surface and I want to create one more value called surfaces. That this represents all the surfaces, and it's a Kotlin sort of style of way of passing that down to our create capture session. And so this will be an array list of the type surface. And then at the end, uh, at the end, we will call apply, similar what to what we did 
with the um, with the media recorder when we call to apply. So it's an easier way for us just to, to an initialize this uh, array list. So we'll call add and we'll pass in what's the first one texture surface. And another one to record service. Okay, now we'll go down to the create capture session and we'll change that to our surfaces. Okay, let's go on down and I want to change this log here. It's in case the capture create capture session failed. So we'll do creating record session failed. It's a typo there as well, so I'll just remove that. Okay, now we're if it's successful, we can now do our main setup here. So we can set the is recording flag to true because we're going to start the recording. Now we can call the media recorder start. Okay, and that will start the media recorder. And again, remember to call setup media recorder in our record session. And because we've got a couple of sessions um, happening and we're switching between them, I'm going to put in our background handler so we can run this on a background thread. And I will do the same for our preview session as well. So I've got the preview session here, change that. Okay. So that's our preview session created. I also want to go down to our start chronometer. So I've got a number of functions as part of the setup here. So I'm going to create two new functions. One will be, uh, let's see what we'll call it. Uh, we'll call it start record session. So we're starting record session, we'll start the chronometer. And then we'll call the record session. And I'll do something similar for stop record session. And already I've spotted a problem here. Um, the autocomplete, I was pretty quick off the mark there. Let's change that to stop start chronometer okay I spotted that so in the stop recording session we will call stop chronometer then we can call stop media recorder and once we've stopped that we can just restart the preview session again okay so we've now implemented start and stop functions and finally, inside our capture button on click listener, we'll just implement those. So notice how we've got this recording there. So if we stop it, we set this recording to false. That's correct. But we no longer need to call the stop chronometer. That was just part of the debugging in the first episode. We'll call the uh, stop record session. And similar to down here, we'll change that to is recording true. We'll call start recording session and these should be the only changes we need to make so let's start up the application and see if we've got the uh, recording happening and then we'll check to see if we've saved it to a file so I'm just going to press the record button start recording nice slow record press stop. Right, this is now being captured in our internal application file because um, we made it private, but um, con con conveniently enough when inside Android Studio, if we go to Tools Windows, try that again, Tools Windows, Device File Manager, select that, and notice here I've got my application name, my package name, Kotlin underscore camera 2 and if I right click on files and I click synchronize just update you'll see I've already captured a couple of files it's the a lower one if I look at the timestamp yeah it's this one here is the one that I've just captured while we've been recording this video 
So if I right click on this and click save as, I'm going to specify that it gets saved into my temp directory. And if I drag my temp directory across to here, we can now see we've got a video here. If I right click on that, open with VLC player. And as you can see, it's displaying with the correct orientation, the recorded video. So um, we've just validated that what we've captured has um, been successfully captured with the right orientation. And that concludes this episode where we successfully uh, recorded the rare, uh, camera, uh, uh, rare camera. And I should h highlight that I've done this on an Android uh, Nexus device or you can do it on a Pixel device. I would reframe from doing this sort of um, camera video capture code on a non-Pixel or non-Nexus device because they use modified camera stacks that have code on top of the core Android code. And I have seen a number of devices that do have bugs. So um, I, I use Nexus devices for these tutorials. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really want to get involved with debugging other um, devices that could have bugs on their camera stacks. So that's definitely why I use the Nexus devices. Anyway, with this tutorial, you just saw how we could set up a record session. And the only main differences here was, we, of course, we added the media recorder and we had to add a couple of surfaces, one for preview and one for actually saving the recorded video too. And then, um, uh, and then we set up the uh, capture request builder with the template record as well so you have to set that and then once the camera capture session was configured it was just a matter of um, starting the media recorder basically yeah and so that does conclude this tutorial um, if you've got, if you want to keep getting notified of the tutorials that I'm publishing on YouTube don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. And if you've got any questions for me, um, YouTube's not the place to post them. I can't find the questions and I am pretty busy. But I do free up time for people who are willing to pay for it. And so if you click up there, there's my link on CodeMeta where I set up uh, paid sessions. And I, I do have social media accounts. I have a Twitter and a Facebook and my handles up there. And that's where I make all the site announcements as well. Anyway, thank you for taking the time for watching this. Bye for now.